Bueno, muy buenas tardes a todos. Vamos a dar inicio a nuestro panel, eh, sesión 13, Derecho y Justicia Ambiental. Les voy a solicitar a nuestros panelistas, enciendan sus cámaras eh, para hacer la respectiva presentación del panel y poderles dar el inicio, eh, dar el uso de la palabra y el inicio del panel. Ya están todos en pantalla. Bueno, muy buenas tardes para todos. Eh, en el marco. De... Okay, good afternoon, everybody. In the framework of this event, in this la cordial uh, bienvenida. external Colombian University, welcomes you and all the partners of environmental governance for peace building. We will start our panel called a uh, right to environmental justice. We'll be finishing at 3:30. I am Luis Felipe Germán. I am a researcher professor in the external university. I will be the moderator in this panel. We have Mauricio Velázquez from the Andes University, Jorge Hurtado from the external university, Hector Morales Muñoz from the Humboldt University in Berlin, Germany. I'm Professor Carolina Montes Cortez in the Department of uh, Right to Environment in, in external. The methodology will be the same we have been developing along this event. The panelists will have uh, 10 to 12 minutes, tops to present the papers, and then we will read the questions that you can answer, your chat and other uh, questions that we have uh, prepared for this panel. We will start with Mauricio Velasco with his uh, presentation. Mauricio, welcome. I apologize for my uh, the name of my presentation in English, so I will start with this uh, presentation. The expansion of the agricultural border to the canalization process and deforestation process has been the regular pattern of behavior of most states in the world. One of the strongest states, the United States, promoted the organized um, colonization of the endless uh, border to the West. Sometimes they were used in the extermination of indigenous, sometimes it was used to gain territories to other states, like uh, governments. Uh, United States quickly had to establish incentives against deforestation. But the most important, in all the cases, these countries, all the countries, these occupations could not be changed at will by the government. The military force uh, failed in doing that before ignoring the stable arrangement in the populations where the United States did was incorporated in their arrangements as a fundamental step to establish the uh, monopoly of state government. So there's a crucial uh, lesson. Arrival of a state in this context is the result of a negotiation. In the recent book about the origins of cocaine, but also in other sources, there is an argument that I think is key. At least from the 60s, all the states in the Panamazonian uh, region, like uh, Peru, Brazil, have uh, thought this region about empty lands that allow an exit to the province to uh, land distribution in the central areas, as well as a quote unquote virgin territory. In Colombia, they uh, promoted the uh, colonizations in the central uh, violence, and then they communities were abandoned at the lock. On the other hand, the population due to the fevers of recent products, the most recent has been a Coke. Recently, there have been two old models, illicit uh, crops and extensive uh, crops. Most uh, recently, uh, taking laps uh, for big crops. So this has uh, followed a colonization and also a spontaneous uh, directed and a spontaneous colonization, both uh, by inhabitants and 
by big corporations. This is not a problem just of our romance. Actually, it has been the pattern of population of all states in the world just in an hour. This process can uh, threaten the survival of our species on the earth. 19th century of the United States doesn't have to be the 21st century of Colombia. The Constitution indicates, and the Constitution is clear, that empty lands belong to the nation and cannot be taken by force or occupied in them, and that that policy needs to benefit the peasant communities. But in the Amazon region, we don't only have a peasants. There is also or just a holders. There are also uh, some uh, big uh, land uh, tenors who have uh, a lot of land. So how are we going to be able to solve the forestation? If the first thing that we have to do to take the state and recover the empty lands is to produce a civil war to evict thousands of peoples that are not peasants. And this is, of course, a rhetoric question. No government has the capacity to military occupy that territory. Meanwhile, we can keep waiting year after year for the government to do something while new or burning of lands keep expanding that uh, de facto occupation. So we need to think big as a country to clearly point the goals that the international community needs to co-fund. I think that we need two crucial steps. Difficult but crucial steps. Conceptually speaking, the most ambitious step we need to take is considering the national empty lots in the Amazon as a form of a payment for environmental services provided by the settlers. In other words, prior to the condition of having met the objectives of payment for environmental services, the occupant acquires the land through the ecosystemic services they provide that will be a progressive mechanisms only applicable to certain uh, thresholds or certain caps. Now, given it's a transfer to no peasants uh, occupants, how can we make this policy to benefit the peasants as mandated by law? The answer will be an international fund to regularize, uh, legalize those lands similar to the Norwegian fund for the fight against deforestation that operates in Brazil. Well, the idea is that the cost of the empty lands uh, granted for environmental services made by the Colombian government is actually partial or totally uh, paid by that fund in order to feed the principal source of lands uh, for patients. That is the fund of lands of the rural uh, reform. In other words, the empty land allocated above the carbon caps needs to be funded by a fund that benefits exclusively peasants to buy lands in other areas. This kind of a policy would allow fast regularization and the first step in the non-military entrance of the government to that uh, territory. Reality about uh, changing those structures in uh, areas abandoned by the government. Second incentive for preservation subject to a strict verification process. The third transfer of lands of the nation with caps paid by the international community. And finally, strengthening the fund of lands to expand the access to lands for patients, perhaps in better connected areas. This uh, policy needs to be uh, supported with strict uh, protection of all parts and, and reserve areas where we need to search for access for the access uh, to land, like the one that Guatemala has. I also think that collective uh, allocation of lands is a good path as shown by soil research on collective or uh, peace uh, reserves on collective territories. Path, if we don't have a real formalization path, we will have a lot of difficulties for the state to make presence regarding all the other agencies. Now, um, assigning the land is not enough. We need another step that is the second step that I uh, mentioned. This time in terms of um, institutionality for a payment of communal environmental services. When we pay for payment of environmental services within about economic incentives to stop deforestation. Saying like that, programs like Red Plus 
interrupt the deforestation and compensate them. In our research, we have observed two problems. The first, the TSA needs to work as sources more than as uh, dikes. So the main function is to serve to fund the traffic of non-sustainable economies to sustainable economies. So that means the most important sustainability is the communities. Once the economy sustains the community, becomes sustainable with the environment. Now, if the sustainability that needs, we need to care more is the sustainability of community economies, the PCAs need at least to match uh, individual uh, incentives at the level of a farm with collective uh, goals at the level of village to produce community transition. These collective incentives might include territorial public assets like uh, roads, etc. to uh, money funds to be used by organizations. If uh, Guatemala needs to help us uh, think this uh, system of the natural reserves and natural force. I think that Costa Rica can help us to think about the institutionality required for the TSAs in the Amazon region. It's about creating a national environmental agency, a national agency for environmental services that is in charge of uh, getting funding and executing together with the territorial entities, the TSA policies. For the citizens in the Amazon, the National Agency of Lands would be just one. So that will work like a system of like single window in the territory in order to simplify the connection between regularization of tenure and a sustainable community transition. I understand that the short-term solution uh, implies intervention and Marina Silva's experience in Brazil was important to stop deforestation in real time. It has also very important delaying uh, certain commercialization of uh, products associated to the frustration like soy and meat. But anyway, we think that the long-term solution needs to include an ambitious process of regularization funded by the international community and creating a national agency of environmental services continuing the TSA with the territories. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mauricio. I apologize. He was just running, running, I'm sorry. That's to remind you. We continue with Dr. Jorge Ivan Hurtado Mora, who will be presenting his presentation called uh, Legality. <coughs> citizen participation, legality and environmental citizen participation, um, elements necessary for stable uh, peace. Thank you very much. You may be in mute. Okay. All right, good afternoon, everybody. My best uh, regards and special thanks to all the organizers of this important event, especially best uh, regards to the Department of Environment in the university. In the time that I have been allocated, I want to mention this that I have called legality and citizen environmental citizen participation elements necessary for peace, stable peace. Very quickly, I got two uh, comments that it's in what that are the presentation or the central structure of the presentation, a theoretical part where I uh, think to think about the dimension of legality, how important this principle is, constitution, and that permeates environmental management. And of course, a key aspect that is a citizen participation in the environmental aspect for a second aspect, being able to have the exercise of involved in a very important figure that is originated in the peace accords, like the 
plans uh, with a participative approach mandated by the peace agreement. Very quickly, I have to start very quickly to warn and then mention the validity of environment and participation in constitution that the structure of the uh, state of law are a uh, vital and are the genesis for this protection for the environment. This uh, uh, rule or a state of law that uh, determines the overweight of the collective uh, right or good over the individual good. And what the government needs to do to intervene and affect the decisions that can affect in this case, their environmental context. And there we have that generosity of uh, parameters of our contents in the constitution where um, we determine the protection in the environmental um, context. Of course, in the scenario, that principle of legality, what I intend uh, to mention here is that is the collective interest and that uh, protection of a right that in that exercise that sometimes of weight that the court makes and that always uh, gives a precedence to the collective uh, character does not minimize a vital principle in the political uh, system such as that principle of legality as that principle that determines the need for the government of course to make some decisions and in this case the environmental public administration on the basis of pre-existing uh, normative system, except exception uh, status. And here are some assumptions to guarantee that the principle of legality, like in the case, a codification of environmental legislation that doesn't exist in our country. Today, the, we have a lot of regulation that is not tied to the single uh, system for the environmental protection. And I think that that's a deficiency and we, have been delayed for the modification of this uh, technique in the regulatory construction so that uh, we do not create or expand ambiguous uh, norms or rules that can be interpreted in different uh, manners and that can uh, affect uh, something that is the legal uh, security that is also very important in the environmental uh, management and in the resources, of course, the aspect of citizen participation that as well referred by Article 79, that is like the central axis of the constitution in environmental aspect, because it recognizes that uh, right, but also is the basis for the regulatory uh, system of uh, creating those instruments for citizen participation. I think that there are also some uh, input for participation of citizens like access to public environmental information. That is an extremely important uh, right. It was already uh, mentioned no? in some aspects of the policy. Participation even mandated by the Ministry of Environment some time ago and is that without a quality education is not only access to information but is access to quality information and a uh, level higher is the need to guarantee that all the community can access information and understand the information that sometimes is technical and scientific, and scientific and sometimes it's very hard for them to understand. So we uh, need perhaps uh, to think about the participation and, and socialization uh, under the assumption that participating is involved in the communities in the construction of the environmental planning instruments and not uh, just sometimes uh, giving them kind of a result of a product of uh, something where they need not intervene and that can create a breakage for the lack of uh, trust uh, in terms of the, for the government in terms of the environment. So now this, in order to be able to build a solid piece from the environmental aspect, we'll also need to, to uh, determine some assumptions that go around the construction of relationships uh, governed by trust, not by mistrust, because today in the territories, there are many uh, socio-environmental uh, governments that are not being governed by trust, and they are always uh, going about the case, about not uh, being uh, solved.
about what that means. Uh, safeguard of the collective uh, right. And that is an obligation that it's um, totally mandated by the government to uh, protect a right that is totally powerful under the constitution. The community also here has a responsibility. The community as the judges cannot be elements that leave this conception of comprehensive state. And out of this uh, division of powers and the autonomy that each instrument has in the political system. And everything is at preventing migration to the uh, judicial uh, arena when the right has not actually is being uh, threatened. But that responsibility of being able to value those uh, conflicts and remedy them in a prior instance. The natural resources in terms of the conflict, I think that it has been mentioned already uh, here with the uh, due uh, rigor. But of course, I have to repeat this and confirm the natural resources are and have been subject of the internal conflict always. And perhaps in that uh, doctrine about the effects uh, produced by a conflict, sometimes uh, rooted that we have for many years, the environmental variable has not been studied widely enough. But of course, it's true that the natural resources can be a cause of the conflict, and they have been. Natural resources can be a source for uh, financing for the actors of the conflict, deforestation, the extractive uh, industry. And that is uh, true that the environment can be a victim of the conflict. And here, I would like to say that beyond this uh, local scenario, there are some international pillars that have been clearly mentioned here. You can see that very quickly in the presentation. These parameters such as the UN resolution 4737 uh, that recognize uh, that certain uh, war uh, media can be uh, disastrous for the environment also by principle 24 of the Rio declaration and that it's a driver of this uh, law enacted in the Colombian constitution in the environmental aspect. What is is that a war is by definition enemy of sustainable development. That is something vital for environmental management. Also the guidelines from 1994 from the International Red Cross Committee about the need for governments to instruct, to include the protection of the environment in the military doctrine. And then finally resolution 215 also UN about protection of the environment in the conflict affected areas. Now, very quickly, I want to mention this case where I try to involve these theoretical aspects that I have put into the consideration about the participatory unification in the peace agreements. What is the context? The context is that, of course, what is determined is those uh, development plans with the territorial approach, the period uh, principles have been identified 172 municipalities that are the ones that most geographically have been affected by the conflict. And here I want to signify that these territorial spaces have some uh, territorial connotations that we should miss. Some of these uh, spaces coincide with the expansion of the agricultural border. Is there any scenario? I think that Mauricio mentioned it somehow in the initial intervention about how important it is in this uh, scenario of territorial organization to delimit that agricultural border that sometimes have some arbitrary uh, effects or causes and very big environmental impacts. How 87% of these uh, territories have some figure of a protection, uh, forest reservation, or natural park, 17 of these 172 municipalities have more than 50% of the total area as protected area. Even eight of them have like 100% of a protected area. <coughs> and there's some kind of a protection, yeah. Now, what is the context of the participatory environmental zoning in the peace agreement point one about the comprehensive rural reform, section 10, is where this estonification is explained as an instrument of planning for these municipalities that have three clear goals, generating the, the balance between the environment and development, I mean, sustainability, sustainable development with all those elements that structure this international principle 
and have to be adapted to this uh, reality in the country. Update of the characteristics or to characterize the utilization and if necessary, inventory of those areas. It's imperative to have these two scenarios that are important here. This territorial organization, environmental organization, and a data bank, an information system that allows indeed to determine the land utilization and the connotation of each territorial reality in the country and the access and formalization of land that also have to do with that principle of legality that I mentioned at first in this small research and uh, always aiming at the participatory uh, scenario. Uh, that is uh, this scenario that is the, the leader in this scenario in the plans of environmental zoning with participatory uh, focus that it was supported by the autonomous corporations that are a decentralized institutions established by law and also the scientific institutes that without a doubt need to play a key role in all this exercise and uh, methodology was defined for the scientific basis for those environmental zoning plants and seven areas with a high offer of ecosystemic services like the ones that you uh, can see in blue here in this presentation. So what are the findings and these are also a sources gathered by the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development has been the leader. Now in the scenario of participation, it has been determined by the ministry, a strategy for the for participation from the ministry, of course, and uh, we had actors, not only community, but institutional actors that also are a gear of that uh, participatory system. They were disseminated for so in here, perhaps a small, uh, criticism and its scenario for socialization, perhaps um, more important than a scenario of participation. In the end, the strategy needs to be how to empower the inhabitants of those territories that have uh, suffered by the internal conflict and know uh, for has, firsthand the realities of the territory so that they can be actor in the structuration of this uh, zoning plan of the participatory uh, processes that give a uh, faith that they have been updated a uh, sixth time regarding that connection with the communities and that interaction and that process of socialization. And out of this 172, we have seen that three municipalities include that methodology in their territory organization plans. So the environmental uh, plants with participatory focus allowed us to work with um, zones of uh, patient uh, research, community organizations, institutions, organizations here. I have to call attention about something that is that the main, the most present effect is the community, but we cannot leave aside another actor in this and is the economic operator and the, the business associations that also have a scenario of being users in particular of the controls like environmental licenses for exploitation of economic resources. Anyway, this is the scenario that can be presented now today. What's the reality today? The real Okay, today, the reality is that those environmental zoning plans are not a reality yet. The, uh, we have uh, done a uh, work as uh, we can see uh, here, but that today we have the system or the regulatory instrument, the principle of legality to be able to engage and implement these environmental zoning plans. So as a challenge, I could uh, say that is exactly then moving on in adapting those instruments to uh, validate the actions with this uh, binding a character resolution or any other instrument, but I think that we need political will for that. I cannot understand, and it shouldn't be like that, that today, this that is in the peace agreement to be implemented in two years, two years, half a pass, and today with all this work, 
so it's still a pendant for, of this uh, wheel to be able to put into the ground the regulatory instrument that can make it a reality. This environmental sector needs to be articulated with uh, important topics like the national natural uh, parks. The, I mean, the conversation of different areas of knowledge is important so that the entities and the uh, community participation can generate real environmental governance. There is uh, something very important that I want to highlight because of the time and is the environmental sector needs to move in connection with other plans. The big problem of environmental management in the country is not the absence of planning instruments, is not the absence of legal instruments, is the capacity to articulate and harmonize everything from the nat national uh, scope to the smallest. And when we can implement these environmental plans, it's been able to harmonize them with some environmental planning instruments that are already established for all the territory like the territorial uh, organization plans and the companies among others. Some quick conclusions. I think that the environment is a key uh, factor in the management of our conflict and a cross-cutting or mainstreaming aspect in the environmental aspects, but it uh, should not only be a theory, no? but it should go into practice. So that is materialized that the Criteria and standards for citizen participation need to be extended in the implementation of this peace agreement. People need to be involved so that they think that there is a government that they can trust. That's uh, vital. I say this with all due uh, respect because there is this uh, connection between the community, uh, territory affected and areas with special environmental connotation as we saw in these uh, municipalities and that eventually that principle of legality is a pillar of any democratic uh, system because that's how we can guarantee the uh, rights protected by the constitution and offer legal uh, security. This is it, Felipe. I apologize if I exceeded my time. Thank you very much, Doctor, uh, for your intervention. So. Uh, we go now to give the floor to Hector, who will be uh, presenting a, a presentation about the challenges, opportunities, and spaces for environmental governance in Caqueta, Colombia. Hector is uh, from the Humboldt University in Germany. Thank you, Luis Felipe, and everybody for such interesting discussion. You, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So I will, will repeat the, the title, but it's coordinated uh, responses from the government and the civil society to so, socio environmental conflicts. The idea is that I will talk about how the communities uh, perceive the current socio environmental conflicts after the peace agreements and the uh, scenarios for governance where they uh, manage these uh, conflicts in addition to the government uh, responses uh, given in the latest years. The case of Caqueta is a region that has some converging uh, challenges because it's a post-agreement uh, region with high effects of the armed conflict since the uh, 70s, the majority of uh, people in Caqueta have had some direct uh, effect. Uh, they have been victims of the conflict. And it's a region that has high climate vulnerability, also has a huge potentiality, is the point of entry to the Amazon region. It's a biodiverse uh, region and a very important uh, aqueous uh, region because it's the beginning of the Amazon basin. However, very high industries of deforestation I think that many of you are familiarized with the indexes of deforestation in there. However, it also has had some unsustainable utilization of soil for long. This is given the colonization that as um, mentioned by the presenter, it was generated even or encouraged uh, from the government in the 70s with uh, some uh, programs to access uh, to lands and unsustainable utilization of soil also became worse in the 80s with the coca uh, crops. And it has always been like a source of uh, exploitation of resources. 
right now there are some new actors have access and there are huge asymmetries of power in the region. So the research questions were, what are the socio-environmental conflicts and risks in Kakita after the peace agreement? And what are the solutions proposed by the government and the initiatives uh, by the civil society? It was a bibliographic review of more than 150 documents in terms of environmental uh, peace building, especially under the hypothesis that natural resources offer and the environmental challenges offer an opportunity for dialogue and cooperation between a source of uh, conflict and, and financing, mainly. And a literature on environmental, uh, socio environmental conflicts. In Caqueta, we had some semi structured interviews, we have two workshops. One in Caqueta with NGOs, uh, businesses, the governor's office, and some uh, online uh, workshops implementing the methodology of sensitivity to conflict, uh, do no harm, with authors of a project in order to implement the utilization of sustainable use of land to uh, mitigate the climate change. All of this was complemented with a survey with experts in Caqueta and Colombia. So the preliminary results, we expect to publish this paper briefly. It's in the uh, literature about the environmental, uh, social environmental conflicts in Caqueta have to be with illegal economists. A lot of literature about the coca crops, historic literature about illegal logging and wildlife trafficking, also about uh, hoarding of uh, territory, extensive uh, cattle racing and some other uh, special uh, illegal economies like illegal mining in some uh, basins. Also about what was reported by the interviewees in the territories. First, we asked them to make a list of the socio-environmental conflicts after this definition that we gave them. They uh, listed those conflicts and then they prioritized them. So right now, deforestation is the biggest uh, problem, the biggest socio-environmental conflict that they perceive and some others that are connected or that are causes of deforestation, like a land a hoarding, extensive cattle, uh, breeding, uh, uh, raising oil and mineral extraction. Also about the non-plant urban growth, especially in Florencia. Florencia was the biggest invasion of uh, Latin America to say so as it was uh, founded. Uh, so the illegal traffic uh, and the coca, the coca, uh -huh. about the risks in the future in the next 10 years, participants uh, reported uh, several items and we grouped them in four. The first one was the political system people see uh, risks in the mining and energy policy, all the aspect of corrupt, corruption in some authorities. There's a citrus uh, law they see as a source of possible conflict about a governance colonization of new illegal actors that are uh, going, even international uh, investors, all the um, land uh, holding in the utilization of um, money laundering to buy land and in general lack of governance in the territory, in the deepest territory, in environmental aspects, the lack of environmental sensitivity and the social aspect, lack of access to technology and information. People perceive the coca crops like uh, something that has uh, encouraged the, well, the deterioration of the social fabric but of course they recognize it's an economy that provides uh, something. About the actions or initiatives to solve the social environmental conflicts, it's a big uh, list. There's uh, many pilots that have uh, been carried out, some of them with interesting results, uh, locally speaking. So we organize them into first, the technical aspects. There are many initiatives for innovation uh, in terms of agricultural rural expansion, like implementation of agroforestry, uh, farms, many of them mentioned incentives uh, for sustainable production, 
and something uh, fundamental that can be one item for, to coordinate many initiatives. It's a community monitoring in terms of dialogue of governance. They mentioned a lot the national uh, note for a mitigation and adaptation to climate change, especially with emphasis in generating a communities for a peaceful co-living and to have more power of decision in the community uh, meetings or boards, at least so that they can uh, connect with the other endless uh, scenarios of governance available. And also a very interesting key case, alliance between indigenous and settlement to uh, preserve the forest to some uh, civil society organizations. Also about the different methods for conflict resolution, how they can be systematically treated so that we there reach a violent escalation of conflict and even to know uh, reach the courts about the government uh, response. This is a small uh, selection of the endless instruments available to protect or to solve environmental conflicts. Transnationally speaking, there have been several uh, well, a subscriptions of international agreements. One is the Leticia uh, Pact that talks about monitor satellite and monitoring of forces to control the frustration, the Escazú agreement that hasn't been uh, ratified about the access to information, participation and the protection of environmental leaders. Uh, national speaking, there are some uh, fundamental uh, plans for the 2030, like Vision Amazonia and the national contributions at the level of Colombia and um, the development plan have some uh, mainstream topics, but still we are aiming at an economic development model based on the extractive industries. There are many national planning systems, like the new one for control of deforestation, that is a landmark. Another one about the payment of environmental services, and there are some other national agreements with local incidents as mentioned by the previous uh, presenter, all the aspect of the environmental zoning plans in the point one, point 10, in the visa course, the policy of lands and protected areas needs to be coordinated. We also have the, uh, the visa and the serious operations, they are in, in, in red because they are controversial uh, points that they have uh, generated the noise and lack of coordinations with the local initiatives that happen, for, for example, in some uh, cooperation agreements with uh, patients that have been living for uh, many years in national parks and that are one of the main targets of these um, military interventions. And many times they uh, break those uh, scenarios for dialogue. So perhaps they haven't identified very well what's the enemy. It's the big investors, people who have the power to build a roads or 400 kilometers and generate these forest fires, or just uh, sometimes this is small uh, settlement that are used by other people in the region, by other powers in the region. We also have everything uh, provided by the National Agency of Environmental Licenses and the regional plans coordinated by Corpo Amazonia. So what we see for the discussion is that there is lack of coordination with the territorial studies. We still need to coordinate all those uh, pilots uh, locally with a coherent uh, policy that can be called for the uh, environmental uh, peace building. I wanted to show you these maps of this uh, risk uh, report, where on the one hand, we're seeing in that map on the top uh, map, where you see those areas in green that are for preservation and ecological restoration. Those that are already assigned for oil exploration and exploitation. And down there in the same document, some areas that are shown like available areas for future hydrocarbon projects, which as you see are areas that are supposed to be for the preservation and that are just on the border of very important parks, national parks. So there is incoherences that uh, you can see there in the government. And that comes from that conception of the Amazon, like nobody's land or just uh, wild people. 
and they don't recognize that organization in the territory and that is not managed by the legislation, but that they reach agreements about the some uh, reserves and indigenous uh, reserves, etc. Many of the participants reported that there are methodologies and practices for planning, but that they're now not applied. And the participation is just a formality. <coughs> so of course they make them thousands of plans and consultation, but they do not understand. Nothing happens in the territory or very little uh, happens or time is not enough. And other hypothesis is that the government has not adapted to the new logics of security. Many people in NGOs and research centers, they say that for many time they couldn't like access some territories and that's because new actors came here, right? And they haven't identified who are the powers behind these uh, actors with those uh, power of fact. Uh, so as conclusions, it has already been diagnosed that the access formalization and illegal utilization of land are the drivers of deforestation and environmental conflict. The extractive uh, industry is a big risk for the population. The community monitoring of territory and the preservation agreements are one of the strategies that we have to aim and need to be escalated in these long-term strategies for 2030. For the international cooperation, uh, they report that it's important to be a facilitator for institutional coordination. All the agencies, the land agencies, all the agencies connected with rural development and with the agricultural borders, the production of food, with all the environmental agencies and uh, one form can be a generate a facilitators uh, facilitating groups that uh, even with a ombudsman and, rep and representatives of the civil society so we have to think beyond the classic conception of the centralized uh, government where the point of departure is the monopoly of, of violence of guns, which is very hard to reach in the short term with very specific interventions that sometimes are not even connected in the civil authorities that are in the territory, for example, uh, national parks. And a big question to end is how to implement a development model that harmonizes economic activities, non-extractivists, like in the global uh, challenge, the global agenda presented by the uh, with the culture that these populations uh, have. Uh, agricultural and where cleaning the land was seen as good and environmental preservation. Thank you very much, Hector. Okay, so we continue with Carolina. Mm -hmm. Payment per environmental uh, services for the construction of peace. So to be able to answer this, we have to go back to uh, what happened in La Habana with the uh, signature of the final agreement and the implications for the different institutions and for the Colombian uh, regulatory or regulations. Why did we need that? Because we were uh, facing this new uh, Colombia, Colombia in peace that required these uh, adaptations and the two Key um, rationales. First, equality to access to natural resources. And uh, second, that in respect to nation, the natural resources, uh, both renewable and non renewable. Both assumptions that have been included in the Constitution of 1991, like a fundamental to reach sustainable development. Let's remember that under this uh, concept, 
uh, was uh, designed this to facilitate the implementation of this uh, agreement. But what were those points in the final uh, agreement that from the environmental it should be uh, developed by the national government first? It's important to remind that uh, the final agreement did not include an environmental uh, chapter because it was uh, said that the environmental uh, aspect was so important that for the construction of long and stable and durable peace, it was necessary to include the topic like in uh, mainstream, you know, like cross cutting you know, the aspects are not limited to a single chapter. So we have seen that some specific uh, environmental topics were included in three specific points of the final agreement. The first one towards a new uh, Colombian a rural area, the end of a conflict, and about the solution in terms of illegal uh, drugs. So points one and four were the ones with the biggest environmental uh, context in the moment. So let's see uh, very quickly. In point uh, one, they inc oh, we included two uh, fundamental aspects, sustainable uh, planning of territory, and uh, second, the agricultural in the moment, they propose to study with the second point through a plan of environmental zoning to be able to make an inventory of the special areas. And based on this, being able to prioritize a first a preservation areas, a second a protection area, a water protection area, and fourth a zones for a protection. So what happened? What were the specific uh, topics included later in Article 3rd. For the end of the conflict, also, it was assumed that some uh, programs or projects uh, for environmental protection can be uh, carried out and uh, humanitarian demanding to, uh, to enroll the biggest number of um, former combatants from the FARC and give them a one-time payment uh, for this. Finally, the point A4 included some aspects of environmental sustainability and environmental recovery connected to the closing of the environmental A border. Under this small uh, summary about what needed to be uh, made, let's uh, remind a uh, statement about the peace agreement. That is that implementing a peace agreement, uh, it's many times much uh, harder than negotiating the peace agreement. But what was the strategy that the government searched for the implementation from the environmental of the peace agreement? So let's uh, review point by point and then we will see the environmental aspect globally. In point A1, through a different a decrease, it was adopted the procedure for access to land and formalization to land. And also the land uh, fund was uh, created and also with territorial approach. However, they had a difficulty from the environmental because there were conflicts with the vocation of the land utilization after the point three and point four were also regulated through a decrease. Point three promoted the assignment of lands for those uh, productive uh, projects uh, mentioned in order to uh, enroll the demobilized or former combatants so that, and, most of the price should be or have an environmental nature. Also, they created this uh, national program for run, uh, for crop uh, replacement that also promoted the eradication of illicit crops, in particular in natural national parks. Uh, as, Shirin, as mentioned in the reports that in 2019, 10 of the 23 parks with illicit crops were free from this uh, kind of crops. The rest was just uh, being able to uh, keep this uh, parts uh, free uh, from crops. Also with this uh, new uh, decree, uh, it was achieved to uh, enroll more than uh, 3,000 former combatants in environmental projects. So how is this, um, well, oh, how was this developed? This was developed through the figure of payment for environmental uh, services with two main instruments. The first one, a national policy of payment for environmental services and the law 
8, uh, 70 of 2017, um, trying to uh, connect also this that was uh, designed. What were the fundamental reasons to choose payment for environmental services as the best uh, instrument to reach sustainable uh, peace? First, of Colombia is a country with a large diversity, is covered by forests more than 50% of the territory, and that biodiversity. Uh, from that biodiversity, we could obtain environmental services. Second, that uh, in for decades, there had been some effects on these uh, natural resources. And second, that the construction required an innovating strategy and the payment uh, for environmental services could um, meet these uh, functions. What were the, the barriers? First, the institutional disarticulation, duplicity of efforts, and the low quality investments. However, this has had its uh, long term uh, processes where the goals will be met in 2022, but it's too premature to say whether the program were or not. How the different points of the agreement were integrated in this policy of payment for environmental services in one key uh, program, that was the preservation and sustainable use of the natural capital called uh, Sustainable Colombia. This program had four super programs. First, environmental organization of the territory that aimed at meeting the expectations of point one. The second is strengthening environmental governance that was mainstreaming for point one, three, and four. Third, and the economic alter uh, alternative sustainable expectations and the fourth one, the recovery or preservation of a strategic ecosystem, aiding imminent uh, compliance with point four. What was the advantage of that? That it became effective support to solve environmental conflicts and social conflicts because they could uh, exchange productive uh, activities and uh, environmental preservation activities. That's why the implementation of payment for environmental services could complement environmental management and sustainable rural development, which could contribute to the transformation of the rural Colombia. Finally, the a law was enacted to be able to connect to the ground the payments for environmental services included in this policy and develop two kind of instruments. The first, the payment, uh, for environmental, environmental services and second incentives to conservation. The objective of the goal was to generate environmental services based on preservation studies and restoration of ecosystems. What well, has been the problem of this? Because it was a new figure that was already being implemented in the national territory. Uh, we had these instruments since 1973. And what we looked at with that was to give a turn to this kind of uh, incentives. One of the biggest inconveniences in this decree was the possibility includes for beneficiaries of environmental licenses being able to carry out compensation with that figure. However, with the ruling of 2017, this was uh, non-constitutional. So the balance allows us to say that after signing the peace agreement and after all the developments, this has been complete because they didn't use the most the possibilities given by this special uh, procedure so that the president could totally uh, regulate that uh, figure. In several uh, studies in, in January, establishes that several key processes in the implementation of the agreement have been unfunded with a budget deficit higher than 50%, in particular number one, and that it's still key to have a higher participation strategy that can make a feasible environmental uh, zoning to achieve all these objectives, especially environmental objectives. What happened uh, five years later, what we see now, what we have to question now, is that if the peace agreement and the documents uh, issued for the implementation have achieved that environmental sustainability. 
in the peace agreement, or we are not achieving that sustainable development. So to end, I just uh, want to mention some environmental aspects in, that have not been uh, first, we uh, missed that no protection strategies were just for those uh, areas, the object, some protected areas or the concentration areas, they did not establish strategies. And it was mentioned, no, by Carrizosa after signing the peace agreement, that perhaps one of the biggest protectors of the natural resources was the guerrilla, because when they were in that territory, they protected themselves, or they protected from the expansion of the agricultural border, illegal money. Second, there were no environmental recovery measures that needed to be carried out and that were affected. No responsibilities were established for the recovery of these damages. They didn't approach also the aspect of environmental displaced people, uh, rural workers who had to abandon their territories due to this environmental attacks. So there is important progress in the implementation of the agreement. Nevertheless, specifically, I'm sorry, the, there's an audio from her. Okay, when it's about the basic and met it needs. So it means that there are many other alternatives or many other urgent needs the country has and therefore the implementation uh, of the environmental aspect in the peace agreement, well, we have made some progress, but there's still a big uh, debt. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Connery. So let's take advantage of the minutes that we have in this uh, panel that we have uh, for you. And kindly the having a shirt to hear the uh, chat. I would like to ask uh, Mauricio today, uh, we talked a little bit about environmental justice and in that concept, we talked about uh, water justice, climate justice, and Mauricio talk about the creation of environmental agency. I want to ask, what can we do so that the peace uh, construction allows for convergence of the elements of the environmental state of law? And we can have that achieved in the Colombian Amazon region. Yeah, thank you. It's easy. I think that signing the peace agreements is an opportunity, interesting opportunity, similar to the one when peace was uh, signed uh, in liberals and conservatives uh, quite a few years ago. And well, or the civil war in the United States and all those peace processes, what was open was the possibility to make this convergence with the agenda of the lands and agendas of what the community is needing. So if you remember in 57, this law defined to expand uh, uh, part of the budget for education. And that's why we have schools in most parts of the country. Uh, formalization of land in the Andean region was possible thanks to that uh, piece. Today, it's a um, different question in the Amazon uh, region in part because I am not uh, sure that we are in a period of a peace implementation after five years of uh, such a mediocre implementation and expansion of violence uh, has been that strict. I don't know if the window of opportunity is actually not open anymore, but assuming that we still have that window, I believe that the question in the Amazon is just not a question of, or about the government but it's an aspect of environmental uh, justice. And I would say that is uh, making peace with the communities in those uh, territories. We as a society, we haven't had a peace process with those communities. And that of course implies this uh, commitment by the government as such 
but also coming from the international community. I think that we cannot do it by ourselves. Actually, what the countries normally do when they are about themselves, and it doesn't mean like this uh, big existential uh, threat that is the end of the Amazon. Normally what the countries do is go into formalization, uh, a legalization process of the land and building government roads, all those kind of uh, things in a very uh, precarious sense. We cannot do that in the Amazon. So, uh, because we cannot make that in the Amazon region, we uh, need a very a different balances. And actually, I, I don't think that we have very good international experiences about how to do this. So I think that the difference between the pace of levels and regions in the Andean region and peace in the Amazon will depend on the fact that we are aware of this aspect. But what I am afraid is that we won't make this with small measures. Usually small is nice, but in this case, no. If we don't have this global stake, large scale, I don't think that it will be very easy to reach our goal. Thank you, Mauricio. Jorge Iván, you mentioned, or Rodrigo Botero mentioned the problematic of deforestation as a barrier for the construction of a peace. And of course, today the biggest problem is the illegal appropriation of land. Hector also mentioned the characterization made in, in Caqueta as one of the conflicts. So I would like to ask Jorge Iván, if you believe that to face these conflicts related to environmental aspects, but also uh, with the so-called uh, territorial peace, we need to talk about special jurisdiction in Colombia or peace jurisdiction in Colombia. Yeah, uh, I think that I'll give this uh, answer. And uh, after that, I will try to talk with the argument. The answer is yes. The short answer is yes. And uh, well, beyond those uh, topics they have been mentioned by you, Dr. Botero and Hector, it is uh, true that, uh, well, I think that is uh, happening. I will expand a little, and I think that I was saying this in my intervention, and is the, all the migration of the social environmental conflict to justice. And here, one uh, thing would be that, of course, the judges are uh, welcome because they are the ones called uh, uh, putting back into the balance what was like in a way it broken. But today we are also uh, seeing uh, a judge that is uh, taking or making decisions. And that's my uh, position that I want we all do uh, respect and prudence for those who think uh, differently. And it's where orders are being given to the government. And sometimes beyond, they only know about the law, but they don't know about other aspects about how to make those uh, rules or those ordinances efficient, how to achieve that beyond that they can reach uh, that, I mean, Monday was, I mean, nothing I can do as judge giving a five judgments or orders in a sentence. When I say that a subject of measure is a right a holder, but uh, I am part of the government and I'm not aware about what is the dynamic of the government and the capacity that the government has to need that and then that it leads me to the specific answer. And is I think that if the judge will keep uh, having this uh, legitimate uh, role in the solution of uh, conflicts, it's necessary to think very well about the creation of an environmental jurisdiction. And it's necessary to establish and give the capacity to judges that uh, have that environmental structure so that the environmental is not stuck just in rhetorics. But so that it can have this connotation that has been lost a lot and that needs to be a dimensioned in the environmental aspect and is the 
science, what we call the scientific aspect. This is the scientific. I mean, because it's a true that the citizen participation needs to be harmonized with a technical and scientific environment that needs to be always uh, present and needs uh, to rule uh, in the environmental, uh, in the management of resources. And the judge plays a very important uh, role. But uh, right now, I think that is very important to think. And I think that we have taken these steps to think about environmental jurisdiction and some judges that in one way or another have some kind of education or training that allows them in the uh, wrongness to structure, not only the legal aspects, but some elements that would transcend from the juridical aspect so that those uh, rulings are more efficient. Thank you very much, Dr. Lee. I would like to ask uh, Hector one of the questions uh, raised by one of the participants and is this. What is the governance approach used in the research and did you use any one specific concept in particular? Thank you. This was uh, made in this framework of this uh, project of the Likes uh, Center for uh, Research of the Agricultural Landscape and one of my uh, colleagues managed this concept that is called a uh, community governance in his uh, PhD thesis about how the solutions from the bottom to the top allow uh, creating ecosystems or protecting just like the Baltanar in Paraguay. However, I expand a little bit because uh, we are missing the articulation of the levels of governance. And that is like one of the key aspects that I have identified in the research and is that, well, some very interesting innovating uh, solutions are given in the territory to solve uh, some problems, but the big problems to solve uh, the big uh, drivers of conflict and deforestation will require the coordination of the different levels. So one of the uh, things that the people talk about is we need space uh, to solve the conflict in the limits with the national uh, parks, with protected areas, but we need people with decision the power because the forest rangers, they are with us all the time, but they are just there, but they don't have the decision uh, power. So according to what Mauricio said, we still need to go there and listen to the communities. Thank you, Hector. And Dr. Carolina, this morning, we heard about the prioritized the municipalities that are like a 15% of the country. Curiously enough, this municipality hosts environmental richness. 80% of that big uh, natural uh, equity of the nation or wealth of the nation is there. And so if we restrict the utilization of that window, so, so the question that we want to raise, and it's what elements to, are considered necessary to build this agenda and being able to uh, develop a sustainable uh, peace? Well, that's an important uh, question. Also taking into account the way in which the current model of payment for environmental uh, services has been developed in one of the publications that I have made about this. I mentioned about how important it is to connect the community to be able to make visible some progress in terms with the peace building. One of the questions asked about that uh, research is um, if uh, indeed with these peace uh, processes that are being implemented or developed, these instruments for the implementation of a peace, we were making effective reconstruction of the social tissue. And that's where we find the first problem because the reconstruction of the social fabric is a fundamental for peace building, but that is not being achieved. So from the environmental, you were asking like, what are the elements that we need to take into account? It is my, is what I feel. I don't wanna uh, be pessimistic. I think that we need to structure better that figure of payment for environmental services because finding resources 
for this uh, payment given by the natural services that prevents deforestation, that promotes the environmental preservation is economically feasible for a family and not that they are uh, paid $300 a year, $200 a year. That's uh, nothing uh, for them to make a living versus other kind of crops, even illegal uh, crops that give them much higher payment or profit. So I think that the strategy needs to be bet that Colombia uh, says if they want to live from the preservation of the natural resources, or we need to keep prioritizing other fundamental aspects like the basic and met, uh, needs that we have attacked. Um, so and if we don't uh, appreciate those environmental services and value them, it will be very hard the reconstruction of the, the social fabric based on that figure of payment for environmental services. Thank you very much. Finally, and to respect the time we have been allocated, I would like to ask you a final question for sure answer, all of you. And it's, we have uh, seen uh, throughout uh, this day and in your expertise that it's necessary to make some regulatory improvements to articulate, coordinate, just one improvement, one instrument of the Colombian law to strengthen sustainability in the scenario of post-conflict, what would it be, Mauricio? Yeah, that's uh, where it's, I think, one of the aspects. And it's that the environmental uh, law needs to be hand in hand with the land or agricultural law. So that goes hand in hand. So from my expertise, I would prioritize uh, reform to this, what we call regime of or law of empty lands with territorial approach and a specific, uh, it could be specific for the Amazon region because the problem is that they are designed for the entire country. People who are stealing the land in Boyacá, uh, the situation is totally different to those occupying lands in another part of the country. So we need a specific rule for the Amazon region. And we need to unlock this aspect of how we give them land because it's a very hard with this uh, such romantic idea, the one we have in Bogota, that on the one hand, that the peasants is like a wonder uh, people. And on the other hand, I mean, it's monsters if they have more than uh, one uh, kind of crop. All right, so we need to, to know how to tell who is the a hoarder that is logging um, the, the forest and who has been there doing this and fighting all the adversities and difficulties in the territory. So we need much more uh, versatility to expand uh, and I see is that not, uh, sectors uh, are uh, given up. If you talk about uh, Anouk, they have a very closed uh, view. So you go to the territory and you are not able to solve that. We need to solve that. Thank you, Mauricio. Hector. Yeah, it's, it's very hard to choose this one. And perhaps I would make a, or I would echo what Dr. O, uh, Ivan uh, said about the sentences with practical applicability, because without a doubt, there are many uh, rulings and judgments in the territory because the authorities in the executive, well, they uh, move. I mean, it's that a, uh, I live that working as a consultant for the German cooperation and we work with the government entities uh, in advice in process of uh, relocation and land uh, restitution. And a community that has been uh, for two years or three years living in this uh, really terrible situation in Florencia, they achieve relocation 
in the indigenous community given a uh, sentence. However, the times were unachievable in the ruling, in the judgment. So if there some way of the legal power can uh, coordinate the agendas because, well, there is this uh, restitution and this agency, they do, they provide one, but they do not coordinate all the productive part and the uh, sustainable environment protection. So articulated work is uh, fundamental and something else that is also a key and helps uh, coordinating from the technical uh, side is the multi-purpose uh, canister. Thank you very much, Hector. Well, hey, well, I agree with Hector in saying that it's uh, very hard to put that, but I think that I can mention uh, two things uh, very fast. And the first thing is that I believe that everything that we have uh, seen uh, here in the panel, I think that it's imperative. Um, is that this country needs a restructuration of the land uh, organization. I mean, this country is totally disorganizing the territory that affects the utilization of land and the environment. There is a proliferation of a planning instruments, both nationwide and localwide. In that aspect of the autonomy and environmental uh, functions in the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development, going through the corporations, the urban authorities, and going down to the latest municipality in the country. Of course, uh, with a extensive range of uh, functions. Sometimes what is uh, happening is that those instruments are not uh, compatible and then offer a legal security and it's imperative to uh, fine tune that uh, territorial phase of the peace agreement that we have uh, seen in environmental aspects and that would return in something that are the control instruments. When I have organized the utilization of sort uh, of land, it's easier to establish the control system like environmental licenses, that is the administrative license created by the government to make sustainable development, that on the one hand. And uh, second, I think that we need to look at restructuration or think about all the mechanisms for citizen participation created by the law and it's the ones that are made uh, in front of the competent environmental authority, for example, for an environmental permit or a permit to use the renewable natural resources. I think that the citizen somehow needs to perceive that what is it they say in those spaces is heard by the authorities and it's involved as important input for the final decisions. That's not happening today. What the citizens they see so perceive is that the citizen participation methods are just a checkbox without any binding effect. So in the end, they just perceive some uh, rhetorics of citizen participation. So we need to put balance because it's important to know that the final decision maker is the one we have to uh, affect. But also we need to affect that. I would think that is really important. Thank you very much. Thank you. I also agree in saying that it's very hard to choose just a one. We could uh, find a lot, but I'm gonna try to be coherent with what I initially uh, said. The environmental topic in the final agreement was built around the structuration of achieving a land organization, but not just any land organization. Land organization that allows to guarantee equity access to the use of land by the traditionally uh, affected communities or excluded. So by including the environmental aspects in the final agreement, the intention was to establish a limit for environmentally sensitive areas to exclude them from productive processes. And so 
uh, taking the obligation of that is to organize the territories, searching for this organized exploitation of territory according to the vocation. So in this case, my answer would be environmental and zoning that is still pending in this uh, framework of the uh, development of the agreement. Thank you very much, Carolina, Mauricio, Hector, Jorge Juan, for your uh, interventions, your answers. And thank you very much, everybody, for your participation. Don't forget that 3.30, we'll have the uh, final speech. And uh, for the posters uh, session in the Remo platform, that is uh, another platform. Uh, so we have also all the information in the chats for you to join. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.